My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare, turns to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Very welcome to Mass Day on the third Sunday of Lent. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were a word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our loneliness, that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not utter the name of the Lord your God to misuse it, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given to you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his servant, man or woman, or his ox or his donkey or anything that is his. The word of the Lord. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. You, Lord, are the message of eternal life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. While the Jews demand miracles, 
and the Greeks look for wisdom. Here are we preaching a crucified Christ. To the Jews, an obstacle that they cannot get over. To the pagans, madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem and in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over and said to the pigeon sellers, take all this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remember the words of scripture, zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, destroy this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. You are going to raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the words that he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, Many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all, and he did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any man. He could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. This particular man had a dream. He was wandering around heaven when Jesus came along and let him have a vision of something happening down here on earth. It was a church just like this on a Sunday morning and mass was being celebrated. The organist was playing away, but we couldn't hear a sound from him. He could see the congregation singing and again, total silence. He watched the priest say the prayers, but once again there was no sound. He was puzzled, so he turned to Jesus and asked him, why the silence? Jesus replied, well you see, unless people are sincere in their worship, we cannot hear them up here. Now, in the temple, which was considered holy ground, the temple precinct I mean, where they were selling these cattle and sheep and pigeons. That was considered holy ground. Money changing fiddling of the pilgrims was going on by those temple traders because they weren't exchanging the money properly. Now Jesus was aware of all these abuses and that is why he was livid. So in a fit of righteous anger we call it, he cleared the temple of these traders. They will have been doing this for years without anyone challenging them. But Jesus wasn't afraid of them and he did have a go at them. How could they genuinely worship God inside the temple if out in the sacred place, the sacred princings, they were actually... Um, being dishonest with people. 
We could ask ourselves the question at this stage, is there a disconnect in our lives, and maybe there is, with, is there a disconnect between our worship of God on Sunday and the stand we take on vital issues affecting our society? And if there is something wrong, are we prepared, prepared to challenge the powers that be? Some prominent Christians who work in the public domain often take issues with the church on pivotal moral issues which plainly contradict the teachings of Christ. They may be worshipping God with their lips, but their public stance on these issues leads, leaves a lot to be desired and it tells a different story. So is there a disconnect between how we worship here and what we actually believe in? Now in our secular culture, for a lot of people, Sunday, the Lord's Day, which is today, the day of the resurrection, the old Sabbath, as you know, for the Jews, still for the Jews, is Saturday, but that's changed to Sunday for us, and it's because the resurrection happened on a Sunday, so we call it the Lord's Day. It's, however, it's designated to be a day of rest, but it doesn't seem to be sacred anymore, just another working day for people. And if you remember one of the commandments there, which was, have just been read out, was keep the Sabbath day holy, the Christian Sabbath, the Sunday. Keep holy the Lord's day, is that third commandment. With shops closed, the pandemic may have stopped us in our tracks. But the question is, will it bring about a permanent change in our consumerist lifestyle where Sunday once more will become a day sacred to the Lord. Maybe the Lord is warning us here. Maybe shops should be closed and we should give this day exclusively to him. The traders in the temple grounds had their hearts set on mammon. They were defrauding people, actually. The worship of God took a back seat, if it took any seat at all. No wonder Jesus saw red and he set about clearing it, much to the ire of the temple authorities. Let us not forget that it was the temple priests, the chief priests they're sometimes called, who were the principal agents in bringing about the death of Jesus. And things that happened in the temple on this particular day wouldn't have helped his cause at all. Another way that my worship of God may be compromised is when I treat the house of God, which you're in now, as a kind of Sunday bazaar. Isn't that what Jesus said? Stop turning my father's house into a market. Some people would even say that Lourdes, and I'm sure you've been to Lourdes, most people have, it's over-commercialized. And the commercial side of things is sort of creeping into the religious aspect of Lourdes, which is the most important thing. There are not many places these days free of noise or din, even in places of worship. Contemplatives, those are enclosed orders, I know we're not living in an enclosed order, but they say that we can only really find God in silence and stillness. So how much stillness and quietness, now we've got a good chance of being still during the pandemic, but how much of it is really in our lives? So the contemplative tells us that God can only be encountered in the stillness, and if we can't find it even in our churches, then our worship of God will lead, leave a lot to be desired. Remember that in the Old Testament, God was complaining about his people. He says, this people, these people honor me with their lips. A bit like in the opening story there, but their hearts are far from me. So today, now that the Lord is clearing the temple, could we ask him to clear 
out from our spiritual temple all the things which make our worship of him less than genuine and that would be a good thing to concentrate on during Lent and we're nearly halfway through Lent now only then I believe to connect it up with the opening story will there be a resonance between how we worship here on earth and how it is received in heaven Thank you. 
duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. But when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we do give you thanks, and with the angels we praise you as we are saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your name, Hosanna and Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring to us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The sparrow herself finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. The body of Christ.
pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbour, they may fulfil the whole of your commands, through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, and remain with you forever. If you stay in your places and you'll be escorted out, at the end of Mass. Go now in the peace of Christ. Amen.